Man, oh man, do I love golf. I'll be right back. Gang, this is Mike Creevy, host of The Gracious Guest Show. And if you're listening to this podcast, you are listening to The Gracious Guest Show. And you are a member of The Gracious Gang. So, uh, you know, I don't have a subscription service you have to pay for or anything like that. It's just kind of like if you are here, you're part of the family. You may come and go, but you're always welcome. That's kind of my deal here. And this is the show where we explore all things faith, culture, um, through the lens of wonder. And where do we find wonder? You can find wonder anywhere you look. Uh, that's books, that's movies, it's a really good meal, for that matter. And uh, you don't have to go too far, is, is basically the point I'm trying to make. So the whole idea of this show is to be the podcast uh, version of the stuff I do more broadly on my website, thegraciousguest.org. So go ahead and check that out. Um, thegraciousguest.org, where you can find my blog posts, you can find uh, links to the YouTube channel. Please subscribe over there if you have not done so already. Please also subscribe to this show and uh, share it with your friends, with your family, anyone you think might gain something from it. Uh, that's basically my little shtick. Also, I just want to mention I published a book, and uh, I have information about that over on my website as well if you want to check that out. So, um... Anyway, without further ado, golf. I'm thinking about this lately because it is the time of this recording. It's July 8th. I'm going to be releasing it a little bit later, though. Uh, and hopefully, by the time you hear this, I will have already played. But the plan right now is to play this Friday. And, uh, you know, bottom line, I have not played golf this year. I didn't play golf as much last year as I wanted to. And uh, I'm hoping to play more this year than last year, which was only a couple of times. And before I even kind of go down the sort of trip down memory lane here and just share with you some of the things I really enjoy about golf, first off, let me say, if you are not interested in golf, don't necessarily just switch this off. I mean, first of all, if you clicked over here and you're not a fan of golf, kudos to you because it already shows that you have some openness to what I might want to share with you. Uh, but the bottom line is that, um, you know, you may or may not be that interested in the game itself, but what I'm hoping to do today is to just make a case to you for why it uh, is a source of wonder for me. You guessed it. So uh, anyway, here we go. Golf. It all started probably in 1986 when I was two years old. I don't know. I'm guessing it was around then. That's probably about the first time I could actually play mini golf. I'm, I'm basing that uh, off of old pictures and uh, off of uh, the recent experience last summer of taking our little daughter, Noel, who is three now, but obviously she was two last year, to go uh, mini golfing when we were at the shore. And it was, <laughs> it, was, it was a lot of fun and also a little nerve wracking because the attention span of a two year old is pretty minimal to begin with. And then you take her out there. And, uh, you know, like I give her a structured thing to do. And I mean, we're talking miniature golf, you know, putt, putt, for those of you who say putt, putt, where, um, you know, it's not that complicated. You know, you just basically walk around on a gigantic pool table surrounded by pirate, you know, paraphernalia and just bash a little ball around with a rubber mallet, you know, attached to a long, you know, metal stick. So, you know, there's not a whole lot of of skill necessarily to it, even if you're a skilled golfer like I am compared to my daughter, at least. That doesn't always really matter on a mini golf course. It's sort of the great equalizer. So um, my guess is I was about two, probably playing some mini golf. Uh, my family has always enjoyed golf. My uncle uh, Jim uh, played a long, long time ago. He, he was um, sort of semi-pro. He, he played um, or tried out, I should say, a couple times for the uh, British Open and uh, came very close, you know, within the qualifying rounds and stuff like that. Um, so, you know, he's been sort of a scratch golfer his whole life. Um, and, you know, he taught us a lot. My dad um, isn't quite as good as my, my uncle, but, you know, he's also a good golfer. And, uh, you know, the two of them kind of growing up basically passed it on to us, you know, my uh, brothers and my cousins and I. And I think, you know, to a greater or lesser degree and, you know, in some times of our life, maybe more than others, uh, it's a game that's been with us that we've really enjoyed and found a, a pastime. Um, but what I really want to get to throughout this, this uh, brief little episode today is, as I see it, 
the microcosm of life that golf is and the life lessons that it teaches us, uh, like any sport does, and it is a sport, I don't want to hear it, uh, you can disagree if you want, but, you know, hey, maybe that's a good way to get in touch with me uh, through my contact form over on uh, thegraciousguest.org or email me at thegraciousguest at gmail.com. See? There's a reason for me to plug the uh, the email address after all. Um, so, um, you know, so we grew up with it. And um, I don't know how, how better or worse we were than any other kids, uh, you know, playing golf. When, we, when you actually get to the age when you can kind of go around and play a full round, you know, you'd, you'd play like nine holes. Um, and I, to this day, nine holes can be exhausting for me, dep- depending on what the weather's like, what time of year it is, depending on what kind of round I'm having, um, that sort of thing. But, you know, it, it's, it can be a haul sometimes if, you know, you... Uh, if you walk 18 holes, that's, of course, usually the longest version of it that someone will play. Um, but, you know, I, I just, I've always loved, I think, everything about it. It's, you know, it's something to look forward to. You know, it's coming up. Um, it's it's outdoorsy, you know, so, and you can face all sorts of different elements, obviously, when you're outside. You can play in the heat. You can play in the cold, the rain, sleet, snow. I've, I've played in a lot of those conditions. Uh, actually, well, I've played in all of those conditions, but... Um, I can't say I've played in every condition, but uh, I've played in enough conditions over the years to know that, I mean, the slightest thing can change everything. So there's there's a predictability about it, just like life. There's certain things you can reasonably kind of, you know, predict the way certain things will go. You know, you have a general kind of structure. It's not complete chaos, you know. Um, but just like real life, There's an awful lot of unpredictability and even things you thought were predictable before that may not be predictable this time. So you can go out and play one day and like all of your long irons, which are the, the, if you're not familiar, the clubs you use to hit the ball further, you know, so typically the longer a golf club is, the lower the number is if it's an iron. So you hear like, you know, two iron, three iron, four iron, you know, uh, usually that's what what you have is a longer club with a... um, sort of a, a, a steeper angle on the club face meant to keep the ball trajectory lower so it goes further, right? Uh, versus like an 8-iron or a 9-iron or a pitching wedge where it's a shorter club and then the, the club face is more open. It's it's more angled and attempt to sort of lob the ball, hit it higher for a shorter distance and then have it, you know, more or less stop where it lands, ideally, and not roll a, a long distance. So what's really cool is, uh, also as an army guy, I was not an artillery guy myself in the army, but artillery is interwoven with a lot of the things that the army does, of course, and, you know, you have interactions with that particular aspect of the army, Uh, and golf is a great artillery game in terms of judging distances and angles, and, you know, so there's, you know, there's calculations, you know, it's it's something you use your mind and your body to do, um, because you have to think every single shot through. Um, So, you know, in that way, it's like life in that you know, it kind of flies in the face of the tendency. Sometimes we have to just sort of buy the the um, the narrative sometimes in some circles that like our, our actions don't have consequences or, you know, uh, we shouldn't be responsible for our behaviors. We should blame everything on every everybody else. There's always someone else whose fault it is that I didn't do well or that, you know, I didn't get a good shot at something. Well, that's just not true. You know, yeah, sometimes obviously there's there's disenfranchisement, you know, in life or there's You just get dealt a bad hand sometimes, but that's, that is life, right? Um, And I may not go through the same stuff you're going through specifically or the specific circumstances, but every single person, even the quote privileged, you know, that everyone loves to throw that word around these days. Everyone has suffering. Everyone has stress. Everyone has problems. Everyone has uh, life smack them in the face one way or another, eventually. Okay. Everybody. Um, and even if you sort of skirt through this whole life, getting away with everything, you will ultimately be held to account, you know, uh, before God at some point. So bottom line, yes, I see all of that in golf, right? And, uh, you know, even another, I mean, I'm never going to remember all these because I literally just sat down today and I was like, what was on my to-do list for the gracious guest show? Oh, wow. Here's a list of shows I want to do. Hey, golf and me. I've been meaning to do that one for a long time. So I have like literally no notes. I'm just sitting here kind of rattling all this off off the top of my head. So um, I'm I'm looking forward to Friday, if you can't tell. Um, So bottom line, um, you know, we grew up with just kind of playing the game and enjoying it, you know, kind of getting better at it gradually. Uh, I played on my high school team. Anyone from high school listening to this, go Polar Bears. Uh, I was not uh, that great. 
I'd say, I don't know, on average, on a good day, when I was being fully honest with my score, um, you know, maybe, maybe like low 90s. I mean, a super incredible day, upper 80s, but but low to mid 90s, I'd say on average for like my 18 hole uh, play. What's cool is um, now that I'm 36, uh, over the last probably 10 years, I'd say, and again, I don't play very much, so take this with a grain of salt, but my, my average score for 18 holes is probably like mid 80s now, even like low 80s. Um, so, you know, I, I, I would be confident saying that in general, I've, I've shaved about 10 strokes off my average score and you know, what did it more than anything, what continues to do it more than anything is not worrying about it. Honest to God, like I, cause I would get so worked up, especially like in competition, you know, and you stand up there, like, I, I don't know how many times this happened to me. You know, it's like, we have a competition, you're with kids from other schools and stuff. Coach is like watching you on the first tee and you stand there and you go through your whole pre-shot routine. You look all professional. You bought your little, you know, Tiger Woods, Nike, like red polo shirt you're wearing. You have like the, you know, $15 a sleeve or whatever golf, uh, golf balls. You know, you have all this like fancy equipment and stuff. You got the right cleats. Like you really decked yourself out. You're trying to mimic all these like golf heroes. Um, and you stand up there, <laughs> line up your shot and just duff the thing and like top the ball like a complete idiot, like right off the tee. And it rolls like 15 feet and doesn't even pass the ladies tees. Okay. Now I'd be lying if I didn't say that that happened to me at least a half a dozen times when I was in high school, probably more if I'm being honest, but Again, hey, any of the guys from high school who might be catching this, if you remember, you know, no creepy, here was eight of them, feel free to get back to me. Again, the gracious guest at gmail.com. I'm not hard to find. At any rate, um, somehow, you know, you get past that first tee shot and you get out there. And uh, yeah, like like I said, what was really cool in high school was like you're, you know, you're in a foursome or usually a group of four. Uh, so you might be with a kid from like the next school over and a kid from two schools over and a kid, that, you know, a school you never really heard that much about, you know. Um, so that was just cool playing with kids from other schools. Um, and so that's normally the way it would be done on a high school match is like, you know, you'd show up to wherever the match was, uh, it would be at the, that school's home course. And so all these different schools show up and they, you know, they group you up. So there's a bunch of different groups and each group has, you know, let's say, you know, a kid from each of those four schools or if there's more schools, they'll mix and match them. And so that was kind of neat. You meet new people, you know, you keep each other's score, try to keep some integrity. It didn't always work. We were high school students. Not, I'm not insulting high school students, but I'm just saying we were young and uh, sometimes didn't have the best judgment. So sometimes we'd, you know, be tempted to sort of fudge with the scores a little bit, which is not okay. And, uh, uh, but most of the time I, I didn't do that. I was, I was pretty good about that kind of thing. Um, so anyways, golf. Um, played in high school. I, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't play in college, but you know, I, I didn't, I don't, I don't mean competitively. Cause I don't know that I was good enough to do that, you know, um, like on an actual college team, but just playing in college. And part of it was, I was, I mean, everybody's busy in college, but I was also doing ROTC at another school, you know? So it was like, my time was really eaten up, you know, more than your average college student, you know, by far. Um, and, uh, in fact, when I was in ROTC, they weren't giving for the, the way it was set up was the first three years, if I remember this correctly, of ROTC, uh, if you went to a DC consortium school, um, that sent their students to Georgetown ROTC, which is where our program was hosted, the word on the street was that because there was a holdover from like anti-war stuff from like the, the Vietnam era, that a compromise the university had made once kick first they had, I think they had kind of dissolved their ROTC program, like a knee jerk reaction. And this, this is just the story I heard. And then that they brought it back, but that the condition was, you know, you could only get academic credit for like your senior years, military science courses, which is, I mean, just the peak of stupidity and injustice, but whatever. I, I, it might be changed now. It should be if it, if it hasn't. So this was almost like 20 years ago that I was, that I was there, um, or 15 anyways. Um, so we had, um, uh, you know, we had to do ROTC classes, you know, and all sorts of army ROTC stuff a couple times a week, all the way on the other side of Washington, DC. And we didn't get any academic credit for it. So you still had to take a full course load back on your main campus as if you weren't doing all that other stuff as well. So that's just a sidebar just to say I was really busy in college, <laughs> um, took way more credits than like almost all of my other friends just to meet the credit requirement because of that, you know, unjust, foolish policy Georgetown had. Um, but that being said, 
Um, I love Georgetown ROTC. Go Hoya Battalion, by the way. I'm giving all these caveats today to protect myself, I guess. So uh, <laughs> at any rate, um, you know, so I didn't play a lot of golf in college. I would play when I came home. Um, and then, you know, in, in the years since then, running around the world doing army stuff and then um, youth ministry stuff and teaching and now being a dad, you know, it's 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 very uh, tricky, you know, to really justify for me. You know, uh, that's my biggest challenge is, is justifying a time to go out there and do that. Uh, but uh, but I love it. I love to play golf. I love the life lessons. And I just want to share a few more little ones here before I close out and try to keep this to, you know, 20 minutes or less. Um, but basically, the things I, let's say maybe the, the things I like the least about golf, the things I like the most, and I'll finish with that. What I like the, the least about golf is oftentimes, I, I don't think I'm cheap, but neither is, neither is playing golf. So the cost can be a little prohibitive sometimes. Um, you know, and that being said, you don't need to go and buy new stuff all the time. I mean, I'm still using the same irons I had 20 years ago, and I'm planning on getting new ones, but stands to reason that I'll probably get another good 15 or 20 years out of those. So, um, you know, irons, like sets of clubs can be expensive. Other clubs, you know, you can get one or two, you know, here and there, you know, great deals and stuff like that. So that's not a huge deal for me. Um, cause I don't, it's not a, like a constant source of, of, uh, expenditure for me, but just playing. I mean, a lot of times the greens fees are, are just really high, you know, especially if you're going to play regularly, um, so that's one thing I don't like. Uh, another thing I'd say I don't like is, uh, you know, even though I know it's good for me, honestly, is that the unpredictability because I'll go out there and I, I will just, if I'm honest, I don't really know how the day is going to go, even though I play pretty well most of the time. And I, I'm always just playing for fun now. It's just a little frustrating you know, when I, I don't really know if I can depend on certain shots, you know, because I don't practice enough anymore to really <laughs> like really know is my swing going to be right today or am I going to be just angled just the wrong way and have a false memory? You know, it's not exactly like riding a bike. It mostly is. But, you know, if you haven't ridden a bike in 20 years, that's like me not playing golf for a year. Come back and it's like I could just have my hands are just twisted just the wrong way on the grip or something and it'll just be throwing me off. You know, you get a bad habit that sticks with you through the day. So, so I don't like that. Um... But the things I really do like, I've already mentioned a bunch of them. I love, especially when you're playing with other people, you know, that you go with. I don't mind being paired up with someone I don't know, but I, maybe I should want to do that more. But a lot of times I just, if I'm going to go play and I can't get anyone else to go, I'll just go out by myself, try to go early or something. Um, and the, what I really love about that specifically is the peace in a sense of it. You know, it can almost be like a meditative thing if I do it right. Cause I'll just, I mean, I'll kind of pray, I'll think about stuff. And I'll just go and like golf will be the context for like, okay, I get to be outside today for like three hours and just on my own. It's, you know, there's usually, you know, trees and some forest and stuff kind of around. It's, it's usually pretty quiet and it's just kind of a peaceful setting. And, you know, you can't really get that a lot anywhere else, right? I mean, you certainly don't get like anything like that in pretty much any other sport. So I, I think as sports go... Um, it's, you know, maybe like, I don't know, maybe like hunting or, or something, you know, people who are like, or skiing, you know, if you're out in the, you know, something more, um, nature related. So golf, it's, it's almost like in that category for me, as far as like, you know, just being able to get some, some peace, some, uh, reflection time. And, uh, and sometimes that can be really beneficial just, just for my own well-being, my own wellness, my own kind of mental and, and physical and spiritual well-being. Um, so I really like that, I think, overall. And last but not least, it's just fun. And sometimes it's important for us to remember that it's okay to waste time. And, and what do I mean by that? I don't mean waste time at work. I don't mean waste time when you're supposed to be doing something urgently important. But uh, Bishop Barron is really good on this. And, you know, he's been bringing this point up for, for years. And um, he's really leaning on people like Joseph Pieper, the German philosopher, who I did a, a whole show on his book, uh, the... Um, uh, oh, just forgetting, forgetting the name of it now. It has to do with leisure. Leisure, the basis of culture. Or leisure, for, for those of you who prefer, prefer that pronunciation. Leisure, the basis of culture. And his, his thesis is essentially that we have it exactly backwards. Um, you know, like, like politics and achievement and, and you know, economics and, and all this kind of stuff. That's not what human life is about. All of those things are less important than the useless things. 
So when you use something or use anything, when something is utilitarian, you know, we say the whole point of it or of that activity or that device or that whatever it is, is for something beyond it. And so like you use this tool, this utensil, or you use this, this time or this method or, or this uh, aspect of your life for getting to something else. It's like a conveyance to get you to where you want to be. And then it's like, when you get there, what do you do? So is, is your phone a tool or is it sort of an end in itself? Is it a means or an end? So like utilization, use, usefulness, that's all kind of in the realm of the means. But leisure, what our life is really for, like, you know, and biblically speaking, like rest isn't just something like you just drop dead because you've been doing all this important stuff and then like you have to rest. All of the work, all of the effort, all of the toil is for the rest day. It's like the, the rest day is the point of all of that stuff. It's the high water mark. It, it's not like an afterthought. And it usually is an afterthought for most of us. And so sometimes I, I think we, we back burner things that we don't find useful. You know, so I'll come up with all sorts of excuses to not go play golf. And they sound good. You know, well, if my, you know, my wife needs me to be with her for, for this, or oh, I'm trying to save money. or It's like, okay, fair enough. But sometimes the most important thing you can do is the most useless thing. And sometimes, guys, the most useless thing for me is going and playing golf for three or four hours. And it's precisely because it's useless that it's so important, that it's so powerful, that it's just such a wonderful, uh, you know, fun, um, uh, nourishing kind of experience. Because I don't get anything. I mean, like, I'm not going to be on the PGA. I'm not counting on golf to bring me anything, any money. Uh, you know, uh, it's that psh, whatever. I'm just I'm just doing it because I love it. You know, that's like pure human experience right there for me. And uh, I love every minute of it even when I'm really just totally sucking and hitting the ball into every bunker I can find and out of bounds and, you know, it's just like a nightmare, you know. So at any rate, I just wanted to share that this a little bit about golf and me and uh, I hope you enjoy it a little bit. Go out and play golf or do whatever golf is for, for you. That, that same kind of experience that's useless but incredibly profound and healthy for you. So uh, it'll make you better. It'll make you better for, for everybody else uh, and it'll just bring some joy to your life you know, uh, in and of itself. So God bless you guys. Thanks so much for tuning in here today to the gracious guest show. Go again, go to the website, the gracious guest.org. Please send some traffic my way over there. If you could, I'm trying to get uh, more people aware of it. Uh, you know, blog posts. I got, you know, ticking up on some of the content here. I'm trying to produce, uh, get good sort of faith enrichment stuff out. Some, uh, life uh, pondering stuff out there on there as well through YouTube and through the pod, uh, podcast. But all of it is right there, right at thegraciousguest.org. Uh, I've spent some time kind of re, uh, revising and um, really sort of uh, stepping up my game with the website. So I hope you guys will enjoy it. Until next time, don't forget to wonder. Take care. Take care.